Lua widgets, also known as plugin GUIs, are a great way to seamlessly incorporate your plugins with the Roblox Studio interface. Let's get started. So I have this example here, and I can write anything I want and click print output, and it goes to print output. And this is not like something that's built into Roblox. This is my own plugin, and yet it can also combine into any part of the studio interface. And it looks pretty good. Today I'll be showing you how to create this. First, as always for a plugin, drop in a local script. To start, we'll be using create doc widget plugin GUI to create the interface. So in our code, we'll start with Local interface is equal to, we'll reference the plugin object, and create doc widget plugin GUI. Now, the first argument is plugin GUI ID, which is much like uh, my previous tutorial, is simply like a variable name. It's the variable name for the, the window. So we'll call this print to output, since that's what we will be doing inside of it today. The next argument is a doc widget plugin GUI info, which is not actually a data type that you can represent just by adding a couple extra characters. There's a wiki page specifically for this object. We'll be using doc widget plugin GUI info dot new in order to create it. So if you don't want to type it out, you can highlight it, copy, and paste it. The first argument of this is initial doc state, which is an enum value. There are five options, bottom, float, left, right, and top. Now float is the option for a disconnected window that you can drag around wherever you want. All the other options will actually build the window into the interface wherever you choose. To make it simple, we'll just go with float for now. The second argument is whether it's enabled or not. Of course, we want it to be enabled. The third argument is called override enabled restore. Setting this value to true will ignore the widget's previous state. For this, we'll set it to true because we always want it to be enabled when the user starts up. Float x size and float y size is the size of the window if you chose the float option for the initial doc state. Now, I actually already have a user interface for this. It's these two buttons right here. It comes out to 200 pixels wide and 44 pixels tall, so we'll just enter those measurements. The final two settings are minimum width and minimum height. If someone docks the window and tries to resize it, they won't be able to make it smaller than whatever you set these to. So, since we've already figured out our minimum size, we'll just use those same numbers here. Now, if I publish this now, I would have a blank window pop up right here. However, that's not very functional, so we're going to add some functionality to that. We'll start by dragging these two buttons inside of this script. That way, they'll be published along with the plugin. We'll create two new variables to reference these buttons. So now that we've referenced our two buttons, we can move them to inside of the interface. So we'll say message box dot parent is equal to the interface. And we'll do the same with the send button. Now there are a couple other settings we should change on startup. For instance, we want to set the title of the window. We can do that by saying interface dot title is equal to print to output. Now we want to detect when someone presses the button. We'll write send button dot mouse button one click connect we'll connect that to the send click function. However, we don't currently have a send click function, so we need to write one. So let's write that. So we'll create a simple function and print the text in the message box. And now, ideally, we'll have a working widget. I'm not going to walk you through the steps of publishing a plugin again because I did that in my last video. I'll trust that you know how to do it. Now, as soon as you installed your plugin, you should have had this window pop up. Now, this functionality isn't perfect, which is why there's some extra blank space down here, but that's normal. How about I just paste whatever I have in my clipboard? Oh, that works. Print, and there it is. And of course, you can dock this in here, and you can always be able to print anything you want to output. There you go. I hope you learned something. Next week, we'll be discussing toolbars and buttons. See you then.